Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill Teaching for the first time the famous Andrew Carnegie formula for money making based upon the 13 proven steps to riches organized to 25 years of research in collaboration with more than 500 distinguished men of great wealth who proved by their own achievement that this philosophy is practical What do you want most? Is it money, fame, power, contentment, personality peace of mind or happiness. The 13 steps to riches described in this book offer the shortest dependable philosophy of the individual achievement ever presented for the benefit of men or women who is searching for a definite goal in life. Before the beginning of this book you will profit greatly if you recognize the fact that the book was not written to entertain. You cannot digest the contents proper, properly in a week or a month. The author's preface. In every chapter of this book, mention has been made of the money-making secret, which has made fortunes for more than 500 exceedingly wealthy men who are carefully analyzed over a long period of years. The secret was brought to my attention by Andrew Carnegie, more than a quarter of a century ago, the canny, lovable old Scotchman carelessly tossed it into my mind when I was but a boy. Then he sat back in his chair with a merry twinkle in his eye and watched carefully to see if he had the brains enough to understand the full significance of what he had said to me. When he saw that I have grasped the idea, he asked if I would be willing to spend 20 or more years preparing myself to take it to the world, to men and women without a secret, might go through life as failures. I said I would, and Mr. Carnegie's cooperation, I've kept my promise. This book contains the secret, after having been put it into practical tests by thousands of people in almost every walk of life. It was Mr. Carnegie's idea that the magic formula which gave him a stupendous fortune ought to be sought within reach of people who do not have the time to investigate how men make money. And it was the hope that I might test and demonstrate the soundness of the formula through the experience of men and women in every calling. He believed the formula should be taught in public schools and colleges and expressed the opinion that if they were properly taught it would be so revolutionized the entire educational system that the time spent in school would be reduced to less than half. The experience with Charles M. Swap, another young man of Mr. Swap's type, convinced Mr. Carnegie that much of that was as taught in the schools is of no value whatsoever in connection with the business of earning a living or accumulating riches. He had arrived at his decision because he has taken into his business young men after another, many of them with but little of schooling, and by coaching them in the use of this formula, developed in them a rare leadership. Moreover, in coaching, made fortunes for every one of them who followed his instructions. In the chapter on fate, you will read the astounding story of the organization of the giant United States Steel Corporation, as it was conceived and carried out by one of the young men through whom Mr. Carnegie proved that his formula will work, for all we are ready for it. The single application of the secret by the young man, Charles M. Swab, made him a huge fortune in both money and opportunity. Roughly speaking, this particular application of the formula was worth $600 million. These facts, and they are facts well known to almost everyone who knew Mr. Carnegie, give you a fair idea what the reading of his book may bring to you, provided you know what it is, you wa is that you want. Even before I had undergone 20 years of practical testing, the secret was passed on to me, more than 100,000 men and women who have used it for the personal benefit. As Mr. Carnegie planned that they should. Some have made fortunes with it, 
Others have used it successfully in creating harmony in their homes. A clergyman used it so effectively that it brought him an income of upwards of $75,000 a year. Arthur Nash and Cincinnati Taylor used his near bankrupt business as a guinea pig on which to test the formula. The business came to life and made a fortune for its owners. It is still thriving, although Mr. Nash has gone. The experiment was so unique that the newspapers and magazine gave it more than a million dollars worth a la dirty publicity. The secret was passed on to Stuart Ostweer of Dallas, Texas. He was ready for it, so ready that he gave up his profession and studied law. Did he succeed? Succeed? The story is told too. I gave the secret to Janice Rodolph the day he graduated from college. And he used it so successfully that he is now serving his third term as a member of Congress with an excellent, excellent opportunity to keep on using its carries into the White House. While serving as advertising manager of a LaSalle Extension University when it was little more than a name, I had the privilege of seeing J.G. Chaplin, president of the university, use the formula so effectively that he has since made the La Salle one of the greatest extension schools of the country. The secret to which I refer has been mentioned no further than a hundred times throughout this book. It has not been directly named, for it seems to work more successfully when it's merely uncovered and left inside, where those who are ready and searching for it may pick it up. That is why Mr. Carnegie tossed it to me so quietly, without giving me its specific name. If you are ready to put it into use, you will recognize this secret as every, at least one in every chapter. I wish I might be privileged to tell you how you will know if you are ready. But that would deprive of you so much benefit you will receive when you make the discovery in your own way. While this book was being written, my own son, who has finished the last year of its college work, picked up a manuscript of chapter 2 read it and discover the secret for himself. He used the information so effectively that he went directly in a responsible position at the beginning, salary greater than the average man ever earns. His story is briefly described in chapter 2. When you read it, perhaps you will dismiss any feeling you may have had at the beginning of this book. That is promised too much. And 2. If you have ever been discouraged, if you are at difficulties to surmount which took the very soul out of you, if you had tried and failed, you or if you were ever handicapped by illness or physical affliction, the story of my own son, discovery and use of Carnegie formula may prove to be an oasis in the desert of lost hope, for which you have been searching. The secret was extensively used by the president Woodrow Wilson during the World War. It was passed on to every soldier who fought the war, carefully wrapped in the training received before going to the front. President Wilson told me it was a strong factor in raising the funds needed for the war. More than 20 years ago, John Manuel L. Quezon, the President Commissar of the Philippine Islands, was inspired by the secret to gain freedom for his people. He has gained freedom for the Philippines and the first president of a free state. A peculiar thing about the secret is that those who once acquire it and use it find themselves literally swept on the success, but with little effort and they never again submit to failure. If you have doubts about this, study the names of the men who have used it. Whatever they have been mentioned, check their records for yourself and be convinced their names will be their names will be mentioned in the subscription there is no such thing as something for nothing the secret to which i refer cannot 
B without a price, although the price is far less than its value. It cannot be at any price of those who are not intentionally searching for it. It cannot be given away. It cannot be purchased for money, for the reason that it comes in two parts. One part is already in the possession of those who are ready for it. The secret serves equally well. All who are ready for it. Education has nothing to do with it. Long before I was born, the secret had found its way into the possession of Thomas A. Edison, and he used it so intelligently that he became the world's leading inventor, although he had but three months of schooling. The secret was passed on to a business associate of Mr. Edison. He used it so effectively, although that he was making only $12,000 a year. He accumulated a great fortune and retired from an active business while still a young man. You will find this story at the beginning of the first chapter. It should convince you that riches are not beyond your reach, that you can still be what you wish to be, that money, fame, recognition and happiness can be, can be had by all who are ready and determined to have these blessings. How do I know these things? You should have the answer before you finish this book. You might find it in the very first chapter or on the last page. Well, I was performing the 20 years of the task of research which I undertaken at Mr. Carnegie's request. I analyzed hundreds of well-known men. Well, admitted they had accumulated the vast majority through the aid of Carnegie's secret. Among these men were, see the names in their description, the names represent but a small fraction of the hundreds of the well-known Americans whose achievement financially and otherwise prove that those who understand and apply the Carnegie secret reach high stations in life. I've never known anyone who was inspired to use the secret who did not achieve noteworthy success in his chosen calling. I have never known any person to distinguish himself or to accumulate riches of any consequence without possessions of the secret. From those two facts, I draw the conclusion that the secret is more important as the part of the knowledge essential for self-determination, that any which one receives us through what is popularly known as education. What is education anyway? This had been answered in full detail. As far as schooling is concerned, many of these men had very little. John Wanataker once told me that what little schooling he had, he acquired in very much the same manner as a modern locomotive takes on water, by scooping it up as it runs. Henry Ford never reached high school, yet alone college. I'm not attempting to minimize the value of schooling, but I'm trying to express my earnest belief that those who will master and apply the, the secret will reach high stations, accumulate riches and bargain with life on their own terms, even if their schooling has been meager. Somewhere as you read the secret to which I refer will jump from the page and stand boldly before you, if you are ready for it. When it appears, you will recognize it. Whatever you receive the sign in the first or the last chapter, stop for a moment when it presents itself and turn down a glass for the occasion will mark the most important turning point of your life. We pass now to chapter one and to the story of my very dear friend who was generously acknowledge, acknowledged having seen the mystic sign and whose business achievements are evidence enough that he turned down a glass. As you read the story and the others, remember that they deal with the important problems of life, such as all men experience. The problem arising from one's endeavor to earn a living, to find hope, courage, contentment and peace of mind, to accumulate riches and to enjoy freedom of body and spirit. Remember too, as you go through this book, that it deals with the fact and not with fiction, its purpose being to convey 
a great universal truth, which all who are ready for it may learn, not only what to do, but also how to do it, and receive as well the needed stimulus to make a start. As a final word of preparation, before you begin the first chapter, may I offer one brief suggestion, which may provide a clue which Carnegie's secrets may be recognized. It is all achievement, all earned riches have their beginning in an idea. If you are ready for the secret, you already possess one half of it. Therefore, you already recognize the other half at the moment it reaches your mind. The author.